Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course, and in this module we're going to be looking at the Custom Calendar by Ekvalon. Now this is another calendar. We've looked at quite a few throughout the different modules of this course, but this one's a little bit different. It has the ability to actually show multiple measures on a single day. So you actually can have multiple metrics that you want to place all on a single day, and they can show, as you can see on the right-hand side, we're showing a kind of like a work calendar where I can see how many regular hour shifts we've had, how many overtime, PTO days, that kind of thing have all shown on this calendar. So it's a nice way to be able to visualize different kinds of metrics on a single calendar. And you do have quite a few different ways you can actually display the calendar itself. There's a fixed calendar, a relative calendar, and different settings that you have within the calendar itself to customize the way that it's visualized. You can even, of course, customize the colors that are shown by each metric. In fact, you'll definitely want to do that if you have multiple metrics that are shown by you know, on your calendar, on your data set. All right, so let's go ahead and walk you through how you'll use the custom calendar by Ekvalon here and uh, get you a good idea of how you might use it as well. All right, so we're inside the Power BI desktop and we're gonna start, of course, by bringing in some data. Now, the data that we're gonna use for this example is going to be rainfall and predicted rainfall data. And uh, this is totally made up data, just uh, you, you might get some hints of where this data might be coming from just based on the, the data by, on the calendar. I'm gonna point those things out as we go through it. But let's go ahead and go to the Get Data section to pull in the data that we're going to be using for this example. It's going to be an Excel file. And we're going to be pulling in this weather conditions data and hit Open. Uh, now the data set, of course, I will provide to you, as I do always. And uh, we're going to be pulling in from that workbook a spreadsheet called Weather. So I'll go ahead and select Weather and hit Load to load this into our data model. All right, so we'll give that a second here to load into our data model. It's a pretty small data set. But this is going to have uh, data that shows multiple metrics. There's actually four different metrics that we could show. We have sun, rain, predicted sun, and predicted rain. So we're going to be looking at the number of hours in a day that we're going to have sun and rain. So obviously there's 24 hours in a day. So the values that we're going to return back are going to be somewhere lower than 24 for each, at least, at least 24 or lower. And we're going to be using the custom calendar by Ekvalon. So we're going to go find that calendar by sh shopping or going to the shop the store, I should say. And you'll find that by going up to the custom visuals store up in the very top here. And once you select the custom visual store, you'll want to go ahead and search for custom calendar. All right. And of course, you should find a couple calendars pop up here. The one that we're going to be using is the top one. So we'll go ahead and select the top calendar, the custom calendar by Ekvalon, and hit add. Once you add this to your custom visuals, you should see it showing up in the visualizations pane on the right-hand side, and I can see it right here. I'll go ahead and bring that into my design surface, and I'll make it take up the majority of the screen for what we're doing here. And so uh, you, there's really only a couple things you need to place into the chart itself as far as fields. You do, of course, need to place a date in here, so I'll check off my date. And then it's going to ask for metrics. Now, you can have really as many metrics as you want in here, uh, but it's going to display those on the day that they appear. So in this case, I have... Uh, sun, rain, predicted sun, predicted rain. I can place all those on the same calendar, and you can see, unfortunately, right now the defaults have them all being the same color. But you can hover above any one of these values and actually see what the value was for that day. Now, what we likely would want to do here is we would want to take the values that we have and make them have different colors for each of the metrics. And that's going to be something that we'll do underneath the format paintbrush. One other thing, though, before we move on to that, I want to point out is you do have a section here for tooltips where you can add extra values if we had any other values that we wanted to have available whenever you hover above a particular day. You could have in the tooltip section another value that would appear in the hover over. In this case, we don't really have anything else, so I'm not worried about putting anything in the tooltip section. All right, so in this example, what we're going to do is we're going to take the, what we've done, what we've already brought in, and we want to change the colors of the different metrics that we have. And we can do that by going underneath the format paintbrush right here. And from inside the format paintbrush, you'll find there's three different sections here that have to do with the custom calendar. There's the calendar section, the legend section, and the metric section. All of the values or all the settings below that are kind of generic settings that you see in just about every other custom visual that you have available to you. So we're not going to really cover those today, but we will cover the ones on the top, starting with the one here called metrics. Underneath metrics, you can see the three different types of metrics that we brought in underneath the metrics field right here. And you can see that you can actually change the settings of each to give each a distinct color. So for example, maybe for the rain, we want to make it uh, blue. And maybe for the sun, we want to make it more of a yellow. And then maybe for predicted sun, we want to make it more of a darker yellow. So you can kind of see the difference. 
And then maybe for predicted rain, we want to make it more of a dark blue. So you can kind of see as you bring those in, you can see on our chart or on our calendar that those different colors now appear. And as you hover above them, you can actually see the predicted values and the tool tips also appear. So we're looking at predicted rain. And you'll notice whenever you hover above a day, you get all of the values. When you hover just above a color section, you get the values for that section. Okay, so that's a key differentiation here. When you go above a day altogether, you get all the values. When you hover above the, the colored sections, you're going to get just the values that you're hovering above. You can also do cross-highlighting here. So if you had any other data sets or any other visuals, I could actually select certain days. So I could select uh, October 6th here, for example, and I can highlight and multi-select by hitting Control to select multiple days that I want to do cross-highlighting with or cross-filtering. In this case, I don't really need to do anything like that, so I'm gonna unfilter, but you could easily filter by other items that you have inside the report. All right, let's look at what else you can do with inside of the format section. So you can also turn on a legend, which is gonna be pretty helpful here. If you hit turn on legend, you'll see a legend appear on the top here that shows you what the color values mean, which is very clearly helpful here. If I expand the legend section, you can actually increase the font size of that a bit. I can bump up the font size from 10 point font to maybe let's say 14 or 15 point font here. There we go, it's a lot easier to read. You could also turn off the turn on or turn off the title. So you can see that actually gives you a little title here, the name of the metrics. And you might wanna actually uh, rename that legend title, maybe something that's more appropriate. So for example, I might call this weather patterns or just weather and put a colon there, something like that. And you can see how it actually appears and changes the legend title once you do that. You can also change the label color. So if you wanted to, you can change the color here by swapping out the color to something maybe a lighter gray if you wanted to. Um, this is just basically the text color it's used here. The black is fine for what we need to do. And then finally, underneath the calendar section, if you go underneath calendar, you'll see there's a couple options here as far as the type of calendar that you can use. You have the fixed calendar, which is what we're looking at right now. And the fixed calendar always defaults to the current date. So right now it's fixed and it starts on the current date. Now you can change that start date if you wanted to. You could change, change that start by date by uh, kind of swapping it out here. And you can see that the start date of the calendar moves and shifts to show just the October month instead of September. Or let me reset the, to the default here. Or you could also change to more of a relative calendar. And when you, use, when you use relative, the nice thing about how this works is it gives you the ability to actually go back to prior uh, months pretty easily. So you can see previous months and following months pretty easily you can adjust in here. So say for example I actually wanted to display the previous month even though I don't have any data in my data set I could hit one for previous months and you'll now see that it's showing August 2017. In this case I don't have any data for that but I would be able to easily display the previous month and because it's relative it's always going to be a rolling previous month. So it's going to look at the Power BI is going to look at the current date see that it's October which is next month will be October and then it's gonna shift that previous month to September. So it's gonna be relative in that it always shifts, it's always dynamic based on the current date. So this is a nice feature in the relative capabilities. You can also see the following month is set to five, means that it's gonna show me the following five months after the current month. You may wanna adjust that, so maybe something like one here as well. One is actually just showing the current, let's say two, there we go. And now I'm seeing the previous months and the two following months as well, so meaning the one being the current and then the one after that as well. So it's kind of a nice capability. I kind of like the relative features. That way it's rolling as the new dates appear. It's always going to be showing the most up-to-date rolling values. Uh, there are some other things that are kind of interesting in here. You can do things like adjust the cell size. So you can see as you change the cell size, it actually lowers the size of the calendar. So you can adjust that here a little bit. You can also do things like uh, change the first day of the week. So if you don't want the first day of the week to be a Sunday, like it here is here by default, you can say that, oh, Monday is really the first day of the week that I look at. And then it adjusts the calendars. You can see Monday always displaying as the first day of the week here. I'm going to leave that as Sunday. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to make this a zero. So we're showing the current month and the second month. So kind of a nice way to work with the calendar. You do have a few other settings that you can work with here as well. You can do things like change the border color. That's the quarter border around the cells. You can change the header color. That's the color that you see up here. So if you want that header to stand out a little bit, you could maybe make it one more of a, oh, I selected the wrong thing. I had cell selected. Let's revert that. You can change the header here. There we go. I selected the right one this time. And you can see it changes the value, the color that you see in the headers of each of the months. You can change the days and the weekdays. You can have the weekdays and the days be different colors if you wanted to. So if you wanted the, the, the weekdays to have a different color, you can just come in here and change those to whatever you'd like them to be. So it does have quite a bit of flexibility in that you can change the different settings that you have available here. 
Uh, but just keep in mind here that you have those and that you can always come in and make adjustments as needed. So it's a pretty quick one today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the custom calendar by Aqualon. And if you have any questions, hopefully you're getting a lot out of these. And look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next module. Thanks a lot.